question. What Stone Age population could best represent the earliest descendants of Shem? Basically, what Stone Age population could best represent the ancestors of Semites? Because remember, after the flood, there would have been an Ice Age and a Stone Age. So what ancient people could best represent these descendants of Shem during the Stone Age? The book titled Early Pastoral Nomadicism and the Settlement of Lower Mesopotamia will perfectly answer this question. It reads, The Pre-Pottery Neolithic B, Complex, and the Fertile Crescent. The PP and B cultural manifestations appear to solidify and expand on the earlier tenuous steps towards mixed agriculture that perhaps were begun in the late Epipaleolithic and PPNA. Since its definition at Jericho by Kenyon, the sedentary aspect of the PPNB has been found in a large arc covering Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, Syria, and Turkey. Recognizing the pattern, most archaeologists refer to a Levantine origin for this phenomenon. More suggests a concept called the ancient Levant, which included subsequently all of Syria, western Iraq, most of Jordan, and a portion of northern Saudi Arabia. The researchers at Palmyra refer to PPNB sites there as part of the inland Levant. So here is figure 2, Fertile Crescent in relation to the ancient Levant, and this is where the PPNA and PPNB and PPNC cultures are located, pre-pottery Neolithic, all happening within the ancient Levant. The ancient Levant seems to be an important place for the origins of these ancient people groups. After four seasons of excavation at En Gazel in Jordan, the investigators have subdivided the sequence into three specific phases, PPNB 7000 through 6200 BC, PPNC 6200 through 5800 BC, also called Final PPN or PPNB Final, and the PN Neolithic 5800 through 5000 BC, sometimes called Late Neolithic. Three major topics, climate, subsistence, and lithic technology, which relate to pastoral nomadicism and can be recognized in the archaeological record are briefly examined here in light of the revised PPNB-C record. It seems clear that the PPNB-C was part of a climactic optimum that declined slowly and terminated in stages during the late 3rd millennium BC. Melart speaks of a wetter phase during the early part of that period, which allowed the spread of PPNB culture into more marginal steppe sites such as Bulaukras and Kaolom. Moore has postulated a major shift in vegetation zones between the beginning of the Natufian and the end of the PPNB. Others have suggested that the climate of southern Palestine was wetter during the 7th millennium BC. Economically, according to Bar Yosef, a radical change took place by the beginning of the period. Without clearly stating that the PPNB animals were domesticated, he suggests that a dramatic funnel change was evident at such sites as Miribet, Abu Halira, Bezaman, Jericho, and Abu Gorsh. The evidence of sheep remains at Jericho, found outside their natural habitat also suggests a concerted conscious manipulation. A study of the fauna at Jericho convinced Clutton Brock that domesticated goat and sheep were present by the 8th millennium BC. Moore states that ovicoprids and gazelle were herded by the PPNB. Moore later proposed that only ovicoprids were herded and that the innovation began during the PPNB. Ovicoprids, by the way, are domestic sheep and goats taken together. The earlier levels at Tel Aswad 
contained a majority of wild animals, but the PPNC domestic ovicoprids were dominant. At Buaucras, contemporary to the last half of the PPNB at Abu Hurira and thus part of the PPNC, the initial faunal identification suggests that ovicoprid remains predominated and that goat were semi-domesticated. At Angazel during the PPNB, herding domestic goats and hunting were equally important. In PPNC, goats were increasingly well represented and hunting declined. The distribution of animal domesticates in the Levant, coupled with other evidence, suggests that the hearth area for much of PPNB animal husbandry may have been in the northern Syrian region just north of Jezera. The spread of PPNC culture over the desert slash steppe suggests the continuation of a mixed subsistence strategy, but one that also included some limited sheep slash goat herding. In summary, by 6200 BC, a recognizable PPNC culture had begun to penetrate the more marginal environments of the Near East, both south into the Negev and Sinai, and east of the Levant into Jordan and Saudi Arabia. In each succeeding period, the growing reliance on domestic herd at the expense of farming and hunting and gathering can be documented, thus demonstrating the gradual but inexorable shift to specialized pastoralism. The PPNB PN steep slash desert cultures of Syria and Iraq. The above discussion can provide a basis for examining similar materials from the Jezera steep of Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, and the deserts of southeast Syria and western Iraq. Subsistence patterns clearly define a mixed farming slash hunting gathering strategy, and the lithics are in the larger Levantine PPNB slash C tradition. Several sites in the Jezra were located on the frontiers of the rainfall farming. The influence from the Levantine tradition may extend even to Hasuna. Clayson again found an abundance of domesticated sheep, goats, and cattle and concluded that plant cultivation was of little importance. Examination of those sites of the Jezra suggests that the steep environment was marginal for farming but excellent for expanding herds. To summarize, PPNB populations began to expand into areas of the Near East, often considered marginal to the Fertile Crescent. That expansion has been well documented in the Negev and Sinai, Eastern Jordan, and at Kawam in Syria, where surveys and limited excavations have established some chronological reliability, artifact context, and relevant flora and flora particulars. A number of points suggest a close interaction between those steep and desert sites and the Levantine region itself. Origins of Pastoralism Anthropologists have long debated the definition of pastoral nomadicism. Several recent syntheses have suggested that all pastoral nomads share certain characteristics such as strong legalized kinship and lineage bonds, impermanent dwellings, movement to procure pasturage and water for herds and specific relationships to formal states. Thus pastoral nomadicism seems to stress animal husbandry along pattern migration routes exploiting marginal environments. Developmental models studying pastoral nomadicism have largely focused on historical record, largely because researchers have concluded that a close symbiotic relationship exists between the urban settled peoples and the nomadic peoples. The evidence, however, points toward a new interpretation. Pastoral nomadicism began by the end of the 7th millennium BC as populations began to utilize the discovery of animal husbandry in a new and dramatic way. The process can be seen as a third tier step. First, based on funnel material found in the Fertile Crescent, we can conclude that domestic ovicoprids and cattle were present as early as the mid 7th millennium BC. Second, within the steep region, as exemplified by the Jezra site and Kawam, herding was emphasized. That suggestion is based on the location of the sites in a very low rainfall area, 
and the apparent domination of animals over plants in the economy. Third, if domestic animals were known to the inhabitants of the Fertile Crescent and the Steep, and the desert sites are chronologically contemporaneous or interrelated, the latter may represent early pastoral nomads who still exercised a broad spectrum approach for subsistence. The picture of funnel reversal beginning at the PPNC supports these conclusions, as the funnel curves at Abu Harera and elsewhere suggests a reliance on wild gazelle was almost totally replaced by one on domesticated ovicoprids. Two other arguments can buttress the suggestions here. First, the substantial increase in the site numbers and the site sizes in the late PPNB in the desert and steep seems strongly related to complex interactions between the nomads and the settled populations. Animal domestication may be one variable responsible for that increase. Indeed, the N. Gazelle, Jericho, Kilawa, Nahal, Himar link would argue for close interaction of the type suggested from the ethnographic record. Second, the appearance of numerous sites in western Iraq along watercourses that today are dry indicates both climactic amelioration during the PPNB and the ability of a new way of life to sustain human existence in the region. It appears that the late Upper and Epipaleolithic populations in western Iraq and southern Syria largely abandoned the steep and the desert. Therefore, the PPNB slash C sites represent the initial resettlement that pastoral nomadicism made possible. Prehistoric Akkad The sudden appearance of populations without any previous occupational history in the desert and steep raises the question of ethnic and linguistic identity. The Semitic populations identified as Akkadians were pastoral groups who migrated from the western desert or Hamada sometime within a proto-historic Mesopotamian context. No available historical data clarify their condition in the late 4th and early 3rd millennium BC, although some possible contemporary sites have been identified in the desert. The prehistoric occupation pattern, like that of historical time, suggests a strong pastoral Semitic presence interacting with the settled population. The idea that Amorites, Arameans, and Arabs were essentially pastoral nomadic Semitic people who invaded the plain has been largely accepted, perhaps based on the historical data extent for those populations. The crux of the matter in historical terms centers on the Akkadians. The conclusion here is that the title King of Kish, used by rulers by the early dynastic 1 through 2 period, referred to political supremacy over the northern part of the plain, circa 2900 through 2500 BC, a period when Semitic writing was beginning to be recognized as a state instrument for political domination. Since Semitic populations exercised that control, they exhort political and socioeconomic power not only south and to Sumer, but also apparently north along the Euphrates to Mari and beyond. A cultural symbiosis was characteristic of the region, and the early Semitic populations penetrated Mesopotamia through the middle Euphrates Valley. They spread to the region of Kish, Sipra, and Mari, and moved sporadically south. So as we just read, Pre-Pottery Neolithic A, B, and C cultures descend from Natufians, and these Neolithic cultures were located in the Levant. They were the earliest pastoralist and the first to domesticate sheep and goats. These PP and A, PP and B, and PP and C cultures are also ancestral to Semites. In terms of culture, pastoralism started by Neolithic Levantines. And when you study Semitic culture, you realize that pastoralism was an important element among early Semitic populations. The earliest chapters of Genesis even identifies pastoralism with Semites, such as the patriarchs. According to the book titled Animals and Human Society, it reads, Pastoralism featured in the Old Testament of the Bible with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob being nomadic pastoralists. 
and according to the article titled The Pastoral Lifestyle of Abraham and His Family, it reads, Anthropological studies of this period and region suggest the families in these narratives practice a mixed semi-nomadic pastoralism and herdsman husbandry. Because a family could not be entirely supported through shepherd herding, it was necessary to practice local agriculture and trade with those living in more settled communities. Pastoralism cared for sheep and goats to obtain milk and meat, wool and other goods made from animal products such as leather. Donkeys carried loads and camels were especially suited for long-range travel. The patriarchal narratives repeatedly mention the great wealth of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shepherd herding and animal husbandry were honorable fields of work and could be lucrative, and Abraham's family became very wealthy. With that being said, what is the wide DNA chromosomal haplogroup of pre-pottery Neolithic Levantines, the first pastoralists and agriculturalists who are the ancestors of Semites? According to the paper titled Ancient DNA from Chalcolithic Israel reveals the role of population mixture in cultural transformation. It reads, this finding contrasts with both earlier Neolithic and Epipaleolithic Levantine populations, which were dominated by haplogroup E. And according to the paper titled, Why Chromosome Diversity Characterizes the Gulf of Oman, it reads, the role of the Levant in the Neolithic dispersal of the E3B1-M35 sublineages is supported by the data. And according to the paper titled Y Chromosome E Haplogroups, Their Distribution and Implication to the Origins of Afroasiatic Languages and Pastoralism, it reads, the proto Afroasiatic group carrying the E-P2 mutation may have appeared at this point in time and subsequently gave rise to the different major population groups, including current speakers of the Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralist populations. So Neolithic Levantine populations were dominated by haplogroup E, and haplogroup E expanded from the Levant. Furthermore, Proto-Afro-Asiatic populations and pastoralist populations are connected to haplogroup E. These pre-pottery Neolithic Levantines and Proto-Afro-Asiatic populations and early pastoralist populations are likely all the ancestors of early Semitic populations.